everyone. In this lab, we're going to talk about the bacteriophage titer experiment. And in this experiment, you're basically going to work with bacteriophage, which are just viruses that infect bacteria, and use them to infect bacteria and see what happens when they infect bacteria. So again, bacteriophage is just a fancy word for viruses that infect bacteria. They're sometimes also just called phage. This is what they look like, and here's a bacterial cell. So they go on to infect a bacterial cell, and we're going to demonstrate what happens on agar plates. And we will start off with a little bit of background. So again, phage or bacteriophage means a bacterial virus and these viruses that infect bacteria. So I'm going to interchange these words and I want everyone to be familiar that phage, bacteriophage and bacterial virus all mean the same thing. So each bacterial virus or phage is very specific to the bacteria it infects. So an E. coli phage will just infect E. coli bacteria. A salmonella phage will just infect salmonella bacteria. They're very specific. And this is great because maybe in the future we can use phage in medicine. So if someone has an infection, a bacterial infection, instead of giving them antibiotics, we could potentially give them phage, which are viruses that are specific for that exact infection. So maybe if someone has like a C. diff infection, a Clostridium difficile infection, which is a bacteria, maybe there's a phage that just attacks that bacteria. Phages are also very important in the ecology, so in on Earth, in the oceans. The reason why they're important is because without phages, so without bacterial viruses, we would have so much bacteria in the oceans and this will remove the balance of the environment with the amount of bacteria and organisms and everything we have. So it's very important to have phages that control the amount of bacteria so we don't have a bacterial bloom in the ocean or in the soils or in different environments. So again, here's a picture of what bacteriophages typically look like. And we'll discuss this more in lecture in the viruses lecture. And they go on to infect bacteria. And overall, once you do the experiment, this is what you're going to see. So this is an agar plate and has bacteria everywhere. So this, all these white spots are bacteria. Where you see these clearings, we will talk about them. They're called plaques. It means that that bacteria was infected by viruses and it basically died. So that's why you don't see it anymore. You see a clear spot and we call those clear spots plaques. Colophage is a phage or a bacterial virus that specifically attacks coliform bacteria. So we learned about coliform bacteria with water testing. Coliform bacteria are bacteria that are facultative anaerobic organisms that are gram-negative rods that ferment lactose and grow, produce acid and gas when they ferment lactose and grow at 35 degrees Celsius for 48 hours. I'm saying this again as a review from that lab. So there are phages that are specific for coliforms. So maybe if you have a colif uh, coliforms blooming in a certain water source, you can use colophage to control the amount of coliform bacteria you have. And with phages or bacterial viruses, there's two different types of bacterial bacteriophages or phages or bacterial viruses. There's lytic phages and temperate phages. Lytic phages or lytic viruses cause bacteria to lice or die. So lytic phages, they infect bacteria. So you have a bacterial cell. They infect the bacterial cell, they replicate, and then they cause the cell to lice. We call that the lytic cell, uh, the lytic cycle. And these bacteria, we call them lytic phages because they cause the cell to lice, releasing hundreds of viruses or phages. Because when one virus or phage goes on to infect bacteria, it uses, that, it uses that bacterial cell to make a ton of copies of itself, and then it causes that bacterial cell to lice, and then all those phages are released to go on and infect new bacteria. Temperate phages, on the other hand, are a little bit different. So they also infect bacteria. They replicate in the bacteria, but they have the ability to integrate into the host's genome, into the bacterial genome. So they put their genetic material into the bacterial's genetic material. And once that their genetic material is in the bacterial's genetic material, we call them prophages. So they basically take their genetic material and insert it into the bacterial's genetic material. And so we call this a lysogenic cycle, where their genetic material is constantly being replicated when the bacterial's genetic 
organic materials being replicated. So this is called the lysogenic cycle. Now temperate phages or lysogenic phages can also at any point go back to the lytic cycle. So they're temporarily in the lysogenic cycle and then may eventually cause the cells to lyse and release many more phages. So again, there's temperate phages and lytic phages. And in this experiment, we're gonna use a lytic phage, a phage or a virus that causes the bacteria to lyse. Temperate phages, again, are viruses or phages that incorporate their genetic material into the bacterial's genetic material. And again, they remain dormant until something triggers the lytic cycle. This could be UV, it could be lack of nutrients, it could be anything. An example of a bacteria that has a temperate phage in it or had one is Vibrio cholera. So Vibrio cholera is a bacteria and it causes cholera, which is a bad diarrheal disease. And the reason why it causes cholera is because it has the ability to release a toxin that causes bacteria. It gained the ability to release this toxin from a phage that was that inserted its genetic material into the Vibrio cholera's bacterial genetic material, giving it that ability to form a toxin. So you'll learn later on that viruses can really add to the diversity of bacteria. Here's a good video that explains the cycles of these. The viruses that infect bacteria. This is a T4 phage, which consists of DNA inside a protein coat. The lytic cycle begins when the tail fibers of the phage stick to receptor sites on the surface of a host bacterium, such as E. coli. The phage injects its DNA into the host cell, leaving the empty protein coat outside. The DNA of the host cell is destroyed, and host cell enzymes and nucleotides are commandeered to replicate the phage DNA, making more phage DNA. So you have a lot of the host cells, enzymes, and ribosomes transcribe the phage genes and translate them into phage proteins. Phage parts accumulate and assemble to form phages. A phage enzyme digests the bacterial cell wall and the cell ruptures or lyses. As many as 200 phages spill out. Each of them may go on to infect another cell. So again, this is the lytic cycle here. We have our phage infecting our bacteria. It goes on, makes a lot of copies of itself, replicates itself, and then causes this bacteria to lyse or die. And so in this lab, what you are going to do is you're going to work with the bacteria E. coli, and this E. coli bacteria is susceptible to a certain phage that we call colophage T4R. So it's just a bacterial virus that's specific to E. coli. So you're going to take E. coli and you're going to mix it with this phage or virus and then you're going to plate them on petri dishes and you're going to see what happens. Overall what you're trying to determine is the initial amount of infecting phages. So the initial infecting dose of phages which we call the phage titer. And here's a plate and on this plate we see the white areas are all the bacteria and again like I explained earlier any of these clear spots are plaques. Plaques are meaning that the E. coli had been infected by the virus and it caused the bacteria to lyse or die. That's why we're seeing clearing. We're not seeing bacteria anymore. So you're going to determine the phage titer by counting these plaques or clear spots on your bacterial plates and then you're going to do a calculation which we'll talk about. So the procedure of this lab, how you would have been doing it if you were doing it in lab, is it's called the double agar layer technique. So what you do is you mix your, you have your bacteria, your E. coli, so here's your E. coli, you mix it with different dilutions of your bacterial virus, your phage, and then you add them to tryptone soft agar, and then you pour them on tryptone agar. So this is why it's called the double agar layer technique. So you're mixing them in agar, and then you're pouring them on agar. And so we're using different dilutions of phage. So we're using serial dilution of phages so that we can get a countable number of plaques, clear spots, because we want to be able to calculate phage titer. And then once you mix your bacteria and your different dilutions of your viruses or your phages, you will pour the mixture onto the agar base. And then once it cools, the soft agar is solid enough to kind of 
stop the bacteria from moving, but also soft enough to let the phages or viruses diffuse and infect the bacteria, causing them to lice, causing the lytic cycle. You incubate the plates, and then when you come back, you're going to see that your plates will have plaques on them, meaning that those bacteria were infected by the phage that we added. And then you're going to try to determine phage titer. So this is the whole experiment and how it's done. It's done. And so what we want you to determine, this is what your plates look like, is we want you to determine the phage titer and you're going to determine that by counting the plaques or clearings. Now I want to talk about the plates before we get into these definitions. So you're going to have five different plates. Your control plate will not have any phages, no viruses added to it. It will just be bacteria. We want to make sure that our bacteria group, that's why it's a control plate in science. So your bacteria plate should look like this. It should be a lawn of bacteria. Again, a lawn of bacteria just means bacteria growing everywhere. We're not seeing colonies. We're just seeing a ton of bacteria. So here is our control plate. It doesn't have any viruses. We see a nice growth of bacteria everywhere. Then you're going to have different dilutions of your viruses. Remember, 10 to the minus 6 is most viruses. 10 to the minus 9 is the least viruses. So this is the dilution that you would have made in the lab. And when we look, the plate with the least amount of viruses has a few clearings and the plate with the most amount of viruses has the most clearings, meaning the viruses are infecting the bacteria and causing them to lice and die. So here we go with the control, which is no viruses, then a little bit of viruses, 10 to the minus nine dilution, a little bit more of viruses, 10 to the minus eight dilution, we see more plaques or clearings, a little bit more viruses because 10 to the minus seven dilution, and then the most amount of viruses, which is 10 to the minus six dilution we see a lot of clearings. And then from these, you're going to count plaques or plaque forming units. The reason why we say you're counting plaque forming units, not plaques, even though they basically mean the same thing. So the plaques or plaque forming units are just the clear spots on here. So you're just counting them. And we use the term plaque forming units instead of just saying count plaques because plaque forming unit, uh, units, PFU, takes into account that every plaque or clearing could have been made by possibly more than one phage or maybe some of the phage didn't exactly infect the cell. So it's just a term that's jumbling everything together in case there was a mistake. Okay, so then what you're going to do is you're going to calculate, you're going to figure out your phage titer by calculating PFU per milliliters. So the way you do this formula is you take your plates and you count the number of plaques or clearings, and then you divide it by the dilution because the volume plated on all of them is one ml. So if I have this plate, and let's say, for example, hypothetically, this is my 10 to the minus 8 dilution plate. I count the number of plaques. Let's say I counted 140 little clear circles. That's what plaques are. Then I divide it by the dilution, which this is a 10 to the minus 8. And then I get 140 times 10 to the 8. In scientific notation, that's 1.4 times 10 to the 10th power plaque forming units per milliliter. So that would be my phage titer. So this is all you're doing in this lab. And what I want everyone to get from this lab is know what a bacteriophage is. We talked about that. Know the difference between lytic and lysogenic cycles and know that in this lab we were demonstrating the lytic cycle. Define plaque forming unit. What is the technique called for the agar layering? Remember, this is a double agar layer technique where you take bacteria and viruses, you mix them together in soft agar, and then that soft agar you pour on an agar plate. That's why it's called the double agar layering technique. This, we talked about in medicine, how people could potentially use phages because phages are so specific. And then what would the environment look like without phages? So we talked about how phages are very important for controlling the amount of bacteria. And without phages, we would have a crazy bloom amount of bacteria in the oceans and in the environment. Identif so if you see these pictures, know that these are the bacteria phage experiment. These are not bacterial colonies. These are plaques formed by viruses. Explain how bacteriophages work in this experiment. So we talked about them lysing the bacteria. What is the purpose of serial dilution? So go through all of this and I think you guys have everything you need to understand this lab.